Boy, do we have a lot to cover in this one. So what I want to do is kind of a distro digest number two. This is a sort of video where I go through a bunch of different Linux distro releases that have come out in the last couple of months or are about to come out and kind of run over the pros and cons and quick kind of hot takes of some of these releases. What I realize is that in the busyness of the school year, I'm a high school teacher by day and a computer enthusiast at night. What I've realized is that I've missed like a lot of the major releases. Uh, what I've realized is that there, there actually isn't like a whole lot of change going on in the Linux world, but there are still some standouts and also some kind of mehness that I want to get into. So I have put a number of distributions that are both in beta and out of beta through the ringer. And uh, today is the day where we consolidate all those thoughts into a single video. I'm also going to post a poll on the YouTube community tab uh, that you guys can uh, let me know which one of these deserves like its own full video. I'll be more than happy to uh, look into that further. But uh, let's get into it and we'll see what has been going on in the world of Linux distributions in the last three months or so. But before we get into that, today's video was brought to you by Skillshare. Now, if you have never been on YouTube before and you don't know what Skillshare is, it's an online learning community with thousands of courses by hundreds of industry professionals and enthusiasts on topics that you might enjoy. Uh, as a high school teacher, I love learning. I've always been learning. I continue to learn in a bunch of different areas and Skillshare is just one of the really helpful tools that helps me continue the pursuit of learning in my own life. Whether that is, and it could be the same for you, whether it's a hobby that you are trying to pick up or become more proficient at, whether it is a more professional pursuit that your income relies on your ability to scale up or scale sideways your different skill set. Now, while you can hop around and dig around on the platform for free, Skillshare Premium gives you unlimited access to every course that they have, no advertisements whatsoever, and uh, it is a great resource for upskilling, side skilling, or just learning something new. So I can't encourage you enough. Definitely jump onto Skillshare and have a look around. And the first 1000 people that click on the link in the description below will get 30 days of a free trial of Skillshare Premium. And thank you once again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now that we have kept the lights on, let's jump in and we'll find out what's been going on in the world of Linux. So if you wanted to check down in the uh, description below or the different timestamps for the ones, the projects that you're most interested in. Here we go. First of all, relying on the fantastic work of OMG Ubuntu and Joey Snedden and the team, Linux Mint 20.3 beta is now available to go and download. Now I have been running the beta uh, and, and playing around with it for the last couple of days. And uh, it kind of confirms everything that I already feel about Linux Mint as a whole, which is the project is so polished. It's so consistent. It looks so um, good overall. However, that look was starting to get a little bit dated. That's one of the things that they tried to address with this release. They tried to bring the, uh, the window controls and some of the borders and stuff a little bit more uh, larger and more prominent and a little bit easier to target. Um, and I think also this could be in the response to the fact that the Adwaita theming and all of that kind of stuff uh, is becoming a little bit more locked down. And so it does actually look a lot more similar to what you're going to find on mainline GNOME or at least the Yaru theming um, in that the window controls, uh, is it just me or do they look really familiar now compared to what Cinnamon used to be? I like the change as it uh, definitely doesn't make sense when you have desktops that have very high pixel density on average these days to have window controls that small. Um, also, they have added a new little application uh, to uh, show your recent documents and stuff like that, which I think is interesting considering that the GNOME documents uh, tool is I think been uh, stagnant for quite a little while. And that just continues to add to the list of custom tools that Linux Mint developed like the Hypnotics uh, TV streaming application and also the Warpinator uh, wireless file transfer tool. Um, celluloid among others. So there's uh, there's a lot of great stuff that Linux Mint continues to contribute to the desktop Linux space. And honestly, if I had to pick between uh, recommending like a, a just an average person who's kind of familiar with computers to try Linux for the first time, at the end of 2021, 
Linux Mint would be one of the top contenders. I would honestly have a really tough time deciding between Zorin OS 16 and Linux Mint. And that definitely considering the hardware lockout that Windows 11 brought on, uh, the Linux Mints and the Zorin OSs of the world look like very real alternatives for not everyone, but definitely a select few. Linux Mint's performance is underrated in its overall desktop snappiness and even benchmarks it somehow manages to eke out some victories a lot of the time. Speaking of Zorin OS, Zorin OS 16 Lite has officially launched. Uh, this is the XFCE based desktop that a lot of people have been waiting on. They're still offering both the Core and Pro uh, edition of these desktops. And I think this is a great way of showing people uh, what open source software can do, even if you have a lower spec machine. The other thing that I like about this is the fact that you have a lighter weight desktop so that you can devote more of your system resources to the professional grade applications that come included with Pro. Now, obviously there's a huge discussion that people like to have about, I'm not paying 39 euros for a open source software, and that's fine. Don't think of it in that way. Think of it like a $39 donation to get everything set up and done for you. For the right person, I think it's a great product. And for everybody else, Zorin OS Core, both the main Zorin OS 16 release and also the light release that I've noodled around with, it is amazing how many features it can deliver on on lower spec machines uh, compared to the mainline release and compared to literally any other OS out there. Now, to me, it doesn't visually feel as polished as the mainline GNOME release, but I think that's got a lot to do with how XFCE handles things like compositing and transparencies and all of that jazz. Um, the layouts, the desktop layouts are all here. You do get a more restricted set, obviously, in the core download versus Zorin OS 16 Pro Lite. Uh, you get a lot more uh, choices here, including a global menu for the Mac version, which is kind of, or for the Mac layout, which is kind of nice. But like I said, you do get to enjoy a lot of the, uh, the perks of having the uh, Zorin OS desktop. All these tweaks are known to Zorin OS users, but to see them integrated into a lighter weight release is fantastic. And of course, it's going to be supported for quite some time. Fedora 35 came out at the beginning of the last month. Uh, back in November. Its, its release date got pushed a little bit, um, but they had some good reasons for that. They wanted to make sure that GNOME 41 dropped good and proper, and they wanted to make sure that all the bugs were ironed out, and I think it landed fairly well overall. Uh, they had switched over to the Pipewire audio system in, Linux, uh, in Fedora Linux 34, uh, and they continue to iterate on that to try and uh, push that tin along, technically speaking. While I did jump around into the Fedora 35 desktop and play around with GNOME 41 just for a little bit, uh, it's, it's GNOME. I, I love what the GNOME project do by and large, but to me, the desktop does take a fair bit of time and effort that I just don't have anymore to get working the way that I want it to. And that's not a knock on GNOME or anything like that. It's just that for the way I work and for the, for the stuff that I'm working with, uh, I just prefer to be able to drop a system onto my hardware and be up and running in as little time as possible. So all the love in the world for Fedora Linux 35. And if uh, Fedora is, uh, if basically you're burnt out on the Ubuntu side of distributions, then, uh, then I highly recommend Fedora as kind of like the flagship Linux uh, distribution that, that enthusiasts should go and download. 2020 was a huge love year for Fedora. Fedora seems to be able to turn it around and, uh, and have a bunch of people really frothing for their releases. And, uh, and 2021 has really consolidated that direction, I think, for Fedora. There's a lot of love in the community for this project. Also, a long time ago now, but as it's something that I've only been dipping my toe in the water again recently, the, uh, the advanced hardware support, basically the more up-to-date Linux kernel and hardware support releases of MX Linux has uh, dropped at the end of November. And uh, these ISOs are basically just have more up-to-date uh, Mesa drivers and uh, Linux kernel and all that kind of thing. Uh, and if you are still looking for the mainline stable MX releases that I think came out uh, towards the beginning of November or end of October. And, uh, and those releases went off uh, fairly well, as could be expected. I'm looking to do a MX Linux Revisited um, as I haven't done a deep dive into this distro in quite some time. And now that they have a KDE release with, I'm not sure if that was new to MX21 or whether that was something that came along earlier. 
um, but the 64-bit KDE Plasma uh, with the 5.10 kernel is something that's been on my hit list for a while. So let me know in the poll in the community tab, link in the description uh, to uh, yeah, let me know if I should look into that further. Also, beginning of this month, 3rd of December, we had CentOS Stream 9. Now, obviously, CentOS, a bit of a uh, controversial uh, change of gears for them uh, in recent, or not even that recent really, that was uh, quite a while back now, that they changed direction for CentOS as a, uh, as a way to better pave the road for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And while the community, this didn't blow over too well with them, there is still a lot of enthusiasts out there that enjoy what CentOS is bringing to the table. And CentOS Stream being uh, based off Fedora 34 and ready to pave the way for Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9, uh, CentOS is kind of a way to preview what is coming in that space. And so a lot of developers, enthusiasts, and, uh, and people in that world uh, find a lot of value in CentOS Stream. Now, this is not one that I have looked into uh, or feel I have the reason to, but it, just in case you missed it and you wanted to go and check that out, CentOS Stream 9 is out and landed. And I don't think I really need to mention Ubuntu 21.10. To me, this release kind of just came and went. It, it was a thing that I was expecting and yeah, there wasn't really anything that uh, that particularly blew my mind or made me want to check it out. And the other one that I am, uh, that we're all, I think, still waiting on the release of, and I played around with the beta, was um, Pop! OS 20.10. Now, uh, now, the interesting thing about this is that literally not one day after I had finished making this part of the video, that Pop! OS 21.10 has finally come out. So, Briefly scrubbing over the release notes, I'll give you very brief thoughts and I haven't had a chance to try the final version out. I've definitely run around with the beta for a while, so bear that in mind. But basically, they have uh, brought in a new app launcher that is uh, better designed for various screen sizes. Uh, they have a better multi-monitor experience and they're wanting to basically provide an app launcher that works better and more productively for the desktop shell that they're creating. Uh, and then they finally also have a tech preview for the Raspberry Pi 4 uh, or compatibility with the Raspberry Pi 4. They're also gonna be taking the kernel and driver testing and QA a little bit more seriously. And uh, they also have a new refresh install feature based on the recovery partition that might be uh, pre-installed on your hardware or that you set up yourself. Obviously there is some updates to the GNOME underpinnings, but for the most part, uh, Pop! OS is kind of heading their own direction with their own desktop shell. So yeah, overall, um, in terms of a system that is easily upgradable, I think this is a fantastic uh, step. And for a lot of people, especially if you've bought System76 hardware, you get the benefit of uh, all the first party support that they give for their hardware. Uh, for those who aren't in deeply invested in System76, then I, for me personally, I don't see enough compelling reason here to switch away from what you are probably already used to. Um, but it'll be interesting to see to me, Pop! OS seems to be in a bit of a holding pattern waiting to make the big move to its long-term goal, which is to create its entirely own desktop environment as opposed to a heavily customized version of GNOME. So overall, it's uh, it's an interesting interim a sort of holding pattern release between now and a final desktop, uh, desktop environment of their own. Very cool nonetheless, uh, if it floats your boat awesome. Yes, I apologize for the fact I've got a bit of a cold at the moment, but there you go. 24 or 48 hours can change an awful lot. So that's kind of my little mini rant on uh, what's going on at the moment. Uh, Endeavor OS is another one that's on my list of things to do uh, in the near future as that has had a big year as well. So thank you so much for watching and uh, let me know which distro I should look into next. Uh, as for right now, I'm probably going to be working on a bit of a uh, distro of the year kind of awards uh, video at some stage, um, either late this year or early next. So stick around for that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.